Hello and welcome to Code Sketched. In today's video, we're going to do something different. We are going to recreate an amazing scroll animation that I recently saw on the Google Gemini homepage. Let me show you. So this is the Google Gemini site. And if you scroll down to this section, build with Gemini, we see this amazing scroll animation, which comes from the left and moves towards the right. We can see that the lines move in sync with my scroll position. So if I scroll down, they move towards the right. If I scroll up, they move towards the left and there is a certain smoothness to it. So I was wondering how this effect could be replicated. And recently I came across this site called Asternity UI, which shows an interesting way to accomplish this. Let me show you. This is the Asternity UI and we have several components here, but we are interested in this one. So if you see this exact same effect, wherein these lines follow the mouse scroll and move towards the right when I scroll down. So I was excited and I was able to replicate this same code in my local. This is how that looks like. So almost similar to the real deal, right? We don't have the smoothness of the original Google Gemini homepage, but it looks almost similar in effect. So I have the code here in my uh, VS code and let us go through it together and try to understand how we could replicate an effect like this and how we could build some more uh, similar effects if we want to do it on our own. If we look at this effect as a whole, it looks quite complex, but let us break it down into four components and then try to understand them one by one. By the way, I'll be mentioning both the links to the Asternity UI as well as the GitHub repo that I push this code changes to in the description. Feel free to check out the repo if you want to run this locally in your own system. So we'll be using Next.js, Tailwind for CSS and Framer Motion for animations. If you want to create this project from scratch, you can run the npx create next app command and follow through the instructions. At the end of this, you will get an index.js file that looks something like this. And if you visit the home route, you should be able to see the information relevant to this index.js. All I have done on top of the next.js starter is create a new route called Gemini. Let me show you. So inside the pages directory, there's this new file called Gemini.jsx. Because Next.js follows a file-based routing, we'll see a new route at slash Gemini. If we visit localhost 3000 slash Gemini, we'll be able to see our component that I have created. Inside the Gemini.jsx file, we see that we have a component called Google Gemini Effect Demo. Inside of the component, we are initializing a few things which are related to framer motion. We'll come to that later. But inside this page, we have a component called Google Gemini Effect. This is also a new component that I have created inside the components directory in Next.js and we will start with understanding how this effect works by digging into this Google Gemini effect component. I told you that understanding this was easy and we need to understand just four concepts. The first one of those is sticky positioning. As we can see inside our Gemini page, the Google Gemini effect component is positioned as sticky. Let's try removing the sticky positioning and see what happens. So if I remove the sticky positioning and save this component, I try to go back to our page and refresh this page. As I scroll to the bottom of this page, the effect is happening, but the component gets scrolled out of the view. And that's what the sticky positioning is preventing. If we assign the class name sticky and top 20 to this div, what it is doing is it is keeping this div at a fixed position of 20 pixel from the top of its parent. So the parent being the page that we created. Because of that, even though we are scrolling, our component does not scroll out of the frame. Now you might be wondering, we just have this one component on our page. So why do we see this huge scroll bar? Where does that come from? Let's find out. If you look at the Gemini.jsx page, and if we see what is the height of this page, we come across this style, which is H400VH, which means that we have assigned a height of 400 view height, which means four times the size of the view height for this page. And that is why we see that this page has a 4x height compared to its view height. So hope those two things are clear. Firstly, we are making this page a four times view height page. And then we are making this component sticky so that it stays at the top and does not scroll out of the view as the effect takes place. Another trick related to positioning that is being played in this example is the absolute positioning. We see that these two are aligned such that the SVGs intersect right from the center of the button. So how is this? How is this accomplished in CSS? Well, if you look at the Gemini.jsx, we see that we see that this div, which contains the Google Gemini effect has a position relative. Why is that important? Because inside the Google Gemini effect, we see that this div, 
which holds the codesketch.com button as well as this SVG, both of them have absolute positioning. Whenever an element has absolute positioning, it positions itself inside of the first relative parent above it. So who is the first relative parent above this? It is this div. Now let me change this a bit. We see now that the code sketch button is at a negative 20 from its container, but the SVG is positioned at a negative 40 and thus they are out of sync. If I change the positioning of this div back to a negative 40, we see that they come back in sync. So these two are the position tricks that are being played and the first concept is positioning. Let's move on to the second concept. How SVGs are defined? Well, if you know anything about SVG, we see that uh, usually it consists of a definition wherein we specify these elements like path. Now all these random numbers that you see is what makes up the path, the curved path we see that there are five paths to this SVG and because of that, we have five components. Why is there a motion.path and a path separately? The motion.path is the framer elements which are getting animated. So let us remove them out for now. If we remove the motion.path element and just keep the path elements, this is how the page looks like. Now if I scroll, there is no effect that is taking place because we just removed the motion.path elements. We have these five path elements which are exactly same but with an effect added to them. You can notice that all these paths have a different color. So there's a blue, there's a red and there's a yellow and each of them have a stroke width of two. In addition to that, they have a filter called blur me. Let's see what happens if we remove this filter. So I've removed this filter from one of the stroke lines. And now if we go to the page, we see that the line is now unblurred. So the only thing that these five path elements are accomplishing is create a road that the animated SVGs will traverse. So that is the second concept, which is that we are seeing these blurred SVG lines created with the path element. Now let's come to the third concept. And this concept is related to framer and scroll tracking. We see that framer provides us an utility. Inside Gemini.jsx, we have used that utility called useScroll. Now useScroll is a hook that lets us track the X scroll progress, Y scroll progress, etc. But out of those, we are only interested in the Y scroll progress for now. So we say use scroll, get the Y scroll progress, and we are setting a target on which we want to track this progress. The target is the root div inside of this page. So when we track the scroll progress in this way, we get a value between zero and one corresponding to these two conditions that we define. Now the next concept that we make use of is use transform. Use transform is another utility provided by framer motion to map one value from one range to another. So we see that we have five transforms here and we are mapping the property, which is the scroll Y progress. The value of scroll Y progress is between zero and one. And here we are saying that when the scroll Y progress is zero, then the path length first should be 0 0.2. When the scroll Y progress is 0 0.8, then the path length first should be 1.2. Similarly, we are mapping all the different paths between their start value and the end value. You notice that the start value of all the different paths are different. That is why in our example, each of the path is not of the same length. They are of the different length with the red path being at the front. Now, once we get all these path lengths, then most of the difficult task is done. All that is left to do is supply these path lengths as an array of props to the Google Gemini effect. Let us see how that is being used in the Google Gemini effect. We see path lengths and we see that the first motion path is getting the path length of zero. The second motion path is getting the path length of one. And thus we have five path lengths that map to these five motion.path elements. Motion.path is another special component that is provided by framer motion, which is the equivalent of an SVG path element. But the special thing about it is we can animate it. And here we are animating it using the style prop. That's all there is to this effect. Let us summarize these four concepts so that we understand it as a whole. The Google Gemini effect is positioned as a sticky div inside of our Gemini page. The codesketch.com button as well as the SVGs are positioned in the center of the container by doing some position absolute magic. The use scroll hook provided by Framer Motion continuously tracks our scroll Y progress. The use transform hook provided by Framer Motion continuously converts that value into a mapped value. We have configured different ranges for the different paths. We take all those path lengths and pass it as a prop to the Google Gemini effect component. The component just lays out 
a blurred version of each of the path which is static throughout the life cycle and in addition to that the component also takes the path length that is supplied to it by the parent and updates each of the motion dot paths path length and that's how we see this amazing effect come to life i hope with that understanding in place this effect does not seem as daunting as it was before let me know if you want me to do more similar animation breakdowns in the future also let me know if you want me to cover anything specific in the next videos down in the comment section so i can prioritize them if you have not subscribed to this channel yet please subscribe because that helps the channel a lot thank you for watching and see you in the next one